Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for being here for our conversation, authentic conversation with entrepreneur Pam. Um, Pam Valentine Bell is a CPA and CEO, um, founder of Viking CPA Group. I don't even know why I looked at my notes. I know that. <laughs> um, I know Pam well. She is actually my CPA. So um, I, I've had the honor of knowing her and working with her, and I am so thrilled for you to get to know her today. But before we do all that, um, this is our 11th episode, and we are talking about You Are Enough. Um, something that we all know, right? But we need to hear it. So this is your opportunity to hear it again and remind yourself. Um, so we, this is an authentic conversation with Pam, but in each episode, I talk with entrepreneurs um, about really sharing their authentic story in entrepreneurship. So um, what is that? What is the good, but what is the growing that they've been through? Um, I feel that these journeys help to the relatable and they help to um, enlighten that it's not a smooth path. There are bumps, there are humps, and we keep going. So um, thank you so much for being here, Pam. And I'll let you speak now, of course. Um, I'm always already at the top, but <laughs> yes, um, say hi and please tell us more about You Are Enough. Where did you hear this? What does this mean to you? Let's start there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Anytime to be real and authentic, I take it because that's just what we have to be in life, right? Um, yeah, amen. <laughs> the you are enough, and I really like this theme. I mean, like you said, we got to remind ourselves all the time. And for me, it dates back to my, I don't even, college journey, post-college journey when I was going through the process of trying to get this damn CPA license. <laughs> that <laughs> whole process, we may have to save for another show, but um, yeah. it's one I've of the- I've heard it's pretty intense. <laughs> it's one of the hardest exams, right? Some people say it's harder than the bar for lawyers. It has wow. like around a 40, maybe less than 40% pass rate. So wow. it's a really challenging exam. And so- I really tried to start doing it during grad school. And I'm like, that's not a good idea. This is not working. Um, so I tried to, um, you know, get the certification. It's four parts to the exam. You have to pass all four parts within 18 months. And wow. I was like, struggling to get that done. And it was getting to the point where it's like, I don't, I'm not good enough for this. Um, mm. it's not going to work. I'm not good enough for it. And then there is a statistic that there's less than 2% of CPAs are African-American or black people in general. So now it's like wow. the odds are already stacked against me. <laughs> this exam is really, really yeah. hard and I just, I can't do it. And that's when having a good support system around people who know you for real are like, yes, you can do this. Like, you're enough. Forget the other 98% of Black people who didn't pass. <laughs> At this point, I've gotten a bachelor's and a master's in accounting. So it's not like I don't know accounting. It's yeah. having the confidence to believe in myself and just get it done. And mm. after passing and taking it and passing and failing and so many times, like I stopped counting <laughs> how many times I would mm -hmm. attempt it. Um, but after having those conversations where people are like, you can do this, you are enough, you know what you're doing, you're good, you're great, you're awesome, just focus and get it done, finally got it done. And it was really my last shot. Like I had wow. one more part to pass. If I did not pass that, I would have lost all the other three. Wow. And I'm like, I'm Talk about pressure. Scared. Yeah, that's what, yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm not doing this again. Like that was just so much stress and pressure on me, but having a good support system and just encouraging yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Telling yourself you are enough. Like you got two degrees, you're working in the field just focus and get it done. So that's kind of the first time to date that's memorable where I heard that. Probably, of course, yeah. as a kid, we hear it all the time, but none well, of it. Let, yeah. Oh, sorry. I didn't, 
I just want to say before there's such richness in that. I just want to like, like two things really stood out to me. Um, I think I love that you said like the, you, it's, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, if I heard it wrong, but I feel like, you know, the, you are enough. It wasn't necessarily something that you heard first, but it's like what people around you, like your supporters, your friends, your family reminded you of. Yeah. And then you reminded yourself. Yeah. And, and I, I love that because I think, you know, that in entrepreneurship, yes, you know, it's a journey you take on your own, but Mm -hmm. it's imperative that you have people around you who believe in you and support you. I say all the time, I'm so thankful that my husband is never doubts me, right? It's, it's a godsend. It's not to be taken for granted to have a partner who believes in you. Yes. Um, so I think that's that's wonderful. And and the second point that I have to do the two um, <laughs> you said, um, was that statistic. I think like the two percent is that we said two percent of all CPAs are only two percent are African American. Yes. Now you're part of that, so maybe it's higher. <laughs> you know, it's been the stat I think since the 1950s, I recall, or 70s. Wow. Like that. It's been teetering 2% less than maybe a little bit more, but never exceeded. And it, it's a it's a challenge for sure. Um, yeah. The barrier to entry in the field, that exam, you know, so it, it's definitely yeah. a, a challenge. Well, I feel like, I mean, you're a numbers woman, right? As a CPA. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like there's, there's a purpose that stats serve, right? Like they're really helpful in some cases, but... I think what you highlight here is, you know, it can almost tell a story, like it can almost build a story that's untold in your head, right? Like, mm-hmm. um, I mean, I think about, we were talking about this before, so I wanna, you know, in entrepreneurship in general, um, they there's a stat like 50% of businesses fail within the first five years. Yeah. And it even goes up to 70% by 10 years. Yeah. So. I mean, when you become an entrepreneur, there's there's this acceptance and and knowing of this, you know, elephant in the room, if you will, that, gosh, could I fail? Will I be part of that stat? Yeah. And I think it's it's it has it's similar, right? Like it, it comes back to the knowing of being enough and betting on you as Nathan said in our last yeah. interview. <laughs> Yeah, I like what you said about surrounding yourself with people because yes, you can say it you to said that. <laughs> and you reiterate, yeah, you can surround yourself with people, you can tell yourself you are enough, but you know, you always start to believe stuff when other people say it, regardless of how you feel until you get that confidence level, until you get to the point where you're like, I am enough. Thank you. And I, yeah. I don't need you to tell me, please do keep telling me, but I don't yeah. need you me anymore because I've lived it and I've learned from it and I'm growing through it. And I realize on the other end, I am enough. And I, I heard a quote on my Peloton app and it's, it's so, cheesy. It. <laughs> yeah, it's so cheesy for me to quote this, but this is real life. But they say you've survived a hundred percent of your bad days. So regardless yeah. of how hard you think it oh, is. Oh, I got goosebumps. I love that. I know, yeah. right? <laughs> like you are enough. <laughs> Peloton <laughs> quote. Yes. <laughs> right. I'm like, put me on one of those commercials. But <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. Like it may be hard going through it, but you've survived worse. You will survive worse. It will get better. And yeah, just that's what you have to keep telling yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I, I love it. And so... I mean, have you, so I, I kind of interrupted you, so I apologize. I just had to go in, like dive into this, but have you um, known this all the while or did, I mean, this, you are enough, like you took us to the test, you passed, so you become Pam the CPA. Hey. <laughs> but I mean, so in how many years has it been like in that journey, is it just a knowing always that you are enough or are there moments? No, it's always moments and it's just it's like a little monster moments. sneaking yeah. up. <laughs> it's always something there. And, and you know, 
I always say too, if you don't have the fear of something, you're not going hard enough. You're not going big enough. So just reminding yourself that you are enough when you're like, I want to do this, but I'm scared. Or I yeah. want to do this and it's unheard of. Or I want yeah. to do this and no one's ever done it. Or no one's ever done it like you. Because no one is you. <laughs> like you are. Enough. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's like you, no one, you don't want anyone to do what you're about to do or do it your way. No one can. Um, yeah. They can try to kind of copy and paste what you've done, but they're not you. They don't have the right. special loss. And so it, it's not... I passed the exam and now I know that I'm enough Um, because I was still working in in industry and corporate and then decided to do the entrepreneurship route. Gotcha. That in itself. Okay, knocking at the door at that time, right? (laughs) Yeah, that in itself, like you said, your husband is supportive. My, My husband and I weren't even dating at the time. We were just friends. And yeah, oh, my biggest supporter, like even if I out myself from day one he's like what are you saying yes you can or no that's a good <laughs> idea. you know just that's yeah. reinforcement but just going through the entre- mm. entrepreneurship journey and being one a black cpa that's rare a black female cpa super rare and then just being presentable and having personality in a cpa that's rare so just <laughs> yeah. find- Sorry. <laughs> but really just Speak your my, truth. Speak your truth. Yeah, I will keep my my path of who do I want to be? How do I want to represent myself? How do I want yeah. to be client servicing? Just all of that. Yeah. It can still get challenging because everyone doesn't mix. Um, everyone doesn't like that approach. But the people who do like it are my people. <laughs> yeah. As I say, you're right someone. So yeah. 100%. Yeah. Um, so I, I call this your authentic truth, right? This, this, you are enough. Um, so how has connecting with that authentic truth, um, helped you to ignite your business, to build your brand? Like what has it done for you? Yeah. Um, it's done wonders because (laughs) I, um, okay. As a tax professional, accounting professional, people come to us with all kind of questions, some not even related. But sometimes if people ask me something and I don't know, I'm like, oh, I'm a fraud or I'm an imposter. The imposter, imposter. syndrome? Yes, I'm an imposter. Or like even yeah. comparing to social media, like I hate when people come to me like, I saw on Google or I saw on Instagram, this, 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 and this. And I'm like, I never heard of that. And now I'm like, am I the fraud or are they the fraud? You know <laughs> Right. So in entrepreneurship, when people come to me for advice or specific questions, it's like, I don't know. And sometimes that was a fear for me. Like, how don't I know? Like, why don't I know? Should I know this? And just being authentic with people and just saying, you know what? I'm not sure, but let me find out for you. Or I've heard of that, but I don't know how that applies to you specifically. So let me do some research and some scenarios and get back to you. Now, the thing is, get back to them (laughs) and answer their question. But just being real and upfront and saying, you know what, I don't know. And the first time I did that was so much release when the client was like, I appreciate you saying that. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, being one of your clients, I can definitely say... It's like a breath of fresh air. I mean, I don't think, well, I would say you're right. Someone don't value you because you're just like, know everything. And oh my gosh, I'm like, you know, you are an expert, but it's not like we expect you to know everything. What we value is that you care and you're willing to find out. Mm -hmm. And I think that, um, yeah, I think that it, in certain industries, I'd say mine, communications and yours, you know, accounting and tax, there's maybe even a lot of industries. I'd have to like, think on that. But I feel that they're constantly changing. Like the so tax laws, all kinds of stuff. You know, there's a new social network. There's something different. So I think that it's normal to feel the imposter syndrome. And I put quotes because it's so famous, right? It's normal to feel that. But it is 
important to do exactly this, like the reminder, the reinforcement of I've been there, I've done this. Yeah. And, you know, I always think back to like the start of my career when I was so green <laughs> and, you know, you learn by doing, um, especially in my industry. Right. And so, you know, I think that remembering that you're never done, like when you're done learning and growing, like what's the point? What's the right. point? What are we doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think, and that also really highlights what I, um, how I see like client relationships that it's, you know, the give and take, like you grow together. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah I so like that. That's beautiful. Yeah. Um, I want you to share more about the CFO ish thing. I just like, okay. So because I know you, like I saw this email about CFO ish and yes. I just, I mean, I was like, yes, that's all I thought. <laughs> yes. So, like, because it screams, I'm enough and come yeah. and get it. Like, so just, I mean, connect that to this confidence, this knowing mm -hmm. of being enough and what, what is it? What prompted it? Just tell yeah. me more. So for me, what prompted it is I feel, and I know for a fact, if people are in business, they need some sort of accounting solution, software system. Yeah, a lot not of a spreadsheet. <laughs> Please. Uh, <laughs> and I mean, <laughs> do what you got to do to survive. But yeah, or shoebox. <laughs> definitely not a shoebox. I got one right here next to me. But uh, <laughs> do what you need to survive. But if you want to act and treat it like a business and for it to grow as a business, you need an accounting system. A lot mm -hmm. of business owners start their businesses not with that framework in mind, not knowing or understanding what that even means, not yeah. having the funds to pay for something on a recurring basis. And I they totally don't even, understand they don't that. They don't know any better and then they don't think they can afford it. So they don't reach out, all of that. And so with me yeah. knowing that I'm enough to where I can still do the services for my clients and still service people who don't think they can afford me. So the CFO-ish is a brand. Um, it will be digital brands. I have one course now that's teaching CEOs who have mastered the operations of their business, their products, their services, but teaching them the financial management of their business. So the first course like is- Simplifying and breaking it down. Yes, simplifying, breaking it down. It. The first course is teaching people how to do QuickBooks on their own. So maybe you can't afford someone to maintain it or handle it for you, but you need it. Um, yeah. Or, or even if you do have someone doing it for you, you need to understand what's happening because you got to take ownership yeah. of your business. So that's how I launched CFO-ish. I'm not teaching people how to be true CFOs, but that's where yeah. the issue comes in. Just yeah. enough to where you can be, you can have those conversations about your business. Because if you don't know your numbers, then what are we doing? Enough yeah. to where you know your numbers. And then it may get to a point you may need to hire someone. And that's fine mm -hmm. too. But for people who are starting out and who have who has the time to manage it on their own, they just need to learn it. That's yeah. what the this course and this whole brand and rollout will be, which yeah. I'll say took me a long time to roll out just out of fear. <laughs> so, oh, yeah? Just, yeah, I mean, just out of fear of, oh, will people like it? Is this necessary? Do people love it? it? <laughs> what does the industry say about it? Am I taking people's clients away? Am I taking my potential clients away? And I'm like, you know what? I went into business to help people. And that's what yeah. this is going to do. I, I, I mean, I absolutely love it. I feel like it's, I mean, the CFO ish alone, like that title, um, is so you like it's fun and it's, it's light, but it's, 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 you know, business, yeah. you know, like, I, I don't know. I, that's like a horrible way of describing you, but like, <laughs> that's what comes to right now. <laughs> like, yeah, I just think it, it's playful. That's what I should say. Playful. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I, I got it and I was like, own it. Like, it's just so wonderful. So I'm glad you're highlighting it. And I think, I mean, there's probably a million and one business owners who in this very moment are sitting on something. You know, yeah. last year, 
I sat on the idea, no, two years, for, no, two to three years, I sat on the idea of hosting a retreat and, you know, I use every excuse in the book and I finally did it. And it was, you know, it's it, the only way of describing it. And you tell me if this word resonates, but it's just like shining. Mm -hmm. It's just like this shining moment, like to take the stage, to put it out there for like what you love, what you value, what you see, mm -hmm. be a value to, to be seen, to, you know, breathe life into it. It's just, you know. Yeah, for sure. And I feel like if you have an idea that's already in your head, you already have execution steps, just do it. Because one, you're going to be mad if somebody does it before you. Yeah. <laughs> Again, we yeah. already said we're not going to do it like you or better than you or anything, but it was your idea and you sat on it. Like with, I had this course done over a year ago. Yeah. And I sat on it. And now it's like, oh yeah. shoot, QuickBooks is making changes. You know, I'm sharing my screen showing QuickBooks. Now, now that looks different. I'm like, I wasted so much time. Now I got to go re-record yeah. some things and it's just yeah. wasteful. <laughs> it's wasteful it's, to it's sit on It's part of the R&D, don't worry. <laughs> Yeah, it's you got to chalk it up to R and D. Potential, yeah, your potential, your ideas, like yeah, there for a reason, and they're brewing in your gut. And I know your retreat was a success, um, and I know that was brewing in you for so long. It's just yeah, like, <laughs> do it. It's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be real. You know, it's going to. It be was. Real. It was. Wow. Yeah. So, I'm yeah. so glad you're by my side through all that. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I, I love this. Um, I, I want to be cognizant of time, but um, what, what, I guess, where can people find you? And, you know, um, where can they learn more about CFO-ish and if they want to connect with you? Yeah, so the best place to find me will be Instagram, um, LinkedIn. Both okay. handles are Pam the CPA. Yeah, so from there. <laughs> Easy to find. <laughs> Yeah, very. Pam the CPA. Very easy. Um, once you go on Instagram, there's a link in my bio that has tons of stuff. You can learn about CFO-ish. You can go to the website. You can book free consultation calls, all of the fun stuff. Mm -hmm. And of course, I want to highlight your website, Psyching yes. CPA Group. I'm sure they can find information there as well, right? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Get <laughs> I, I don't want to. I don't want to skip over this. So, um, forgive me, but you know, I think while there's so much great advice offered in here, I really just want to ask directly, you know, to the people who are sitting on the idea or questioning their their worth. I think that's probably something you really deal with a lot. Like, you know, we're we're looking at a recession, right? Like, I put it in quotes because. Will it happen? Won't it happen? I don't know. But everybody's buckling up, right? Yeah. So it's what do you say to those people that are questioning their worth, their pricing, their ability to sustain through a recession, to know that they're enough and they can do it? Like, what advice would you give to them? Yeah. Um, one, people spend money every day, recession or not. You know, <laughs> like seriously, recession or not, people spend money every day. What are you doing to make people want to spend money with you? What value are you giving? What service are you providing? And are you being you? Like mm -hmm. people buy what you have to sell for you specifically. So yeah. just leading with that value proposition and your unique selling coin or, you know, all, you know, all the marketing terms. I don't know those, but okay, you're like. <laughs> You're singing, yeah, you're, you're preaching the choir here. I feel you like, I'm like, yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> and don't cut your costs just because. Like if the market's showing that you should, if no one's buying at all, that's a conversation to be had. But don't just go yeah. and, oh, it's a recession. Let me go 50% off. Like you're, you know, cutting yourself short. Like if you yeah. go in truly, with what you have to offer and valuing yourself, your service. And not only that, but what will the end user receive? What's the value perceived to them? You have to price according to that too. Like, yeah, it yeah. can take three hours to do something, but if you're saving somebody two months, price towards that, you know? Yeah. Um, and yeah. not just based on the time it takes you, because it can take me 30 minutes to do a tax return, but 
it's the value. It's the years the, of experience it took to do it in 30 minutes. It's the yeah. years of trying to get that CPA <laughs> license. Yeah, you know? that's exactly. So yeah, you know, it's, it's a lot of things that go into that, but just wanting people to stay encouraged and understand that people spend money every day, even during COVID and the pandemic, when things were shut down. Um, and I say I that you're going to say when things were shut <laughs> yeah. down, same thing. Yeah. <laughs> But it kind of came together. <laughs> yeah, but that was the busiest point of my business so far. Was that. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So while a lot of people are like, I'm nervous, I'm scared. I'm like, I'm tired and I'm exhausted. <laughs> but you know, it's <laughs> right. in disguise. So you don't know what your blessing in disguise will be. If it is the recession, people may need your services to stay in business. Or people may exactly. need your products to, you know, you just never know. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. And I, I, I mean, I think I just want to reiterate two words that you said here, like, um, the reminder, like, you know, make sure you remind yourself, make sure you have the people around you to remind you. Mm -hmm. Um, and I love that you said reinforcement and I think that goes hand in hand, but I think that, you know, it's important for business owners to not just have the family and friends, um, but you know, the clients that, you know, are your brand ambassadors and they will remind you. Um, and, and I think, you know, I, I had this slide that I did, um, presented a number of times in my business and I had this like pool and it was like the deep end of a pool and it said, you dive into business and by the time you're swimming around, you realize these essential skills you have to have. And it had three bullets and one was marketing. <laughs> <laughs> Two was business know-how and three was accounting. Yeah. So make sure that in that circle around you, the supporters, the people to remind you, you have a Pam and you have a marketing specialist and you have a business know-how mastermind group, something like that, because those I think are the essential pieces to, you know, kind of ride the waves through inflation, recession, Yeah. you know, um, so Easy. yeah. Thank you for highlighting that. I think um, there's certainly been things that you've helped to remind me of and reinforce for me and my business. So I'm so thrilled to share you <laughs> and your authentic self with everyone here today. And um, yeah, I just appreciate so much when entrepreneurs are willing to share their, you know, the growing pieces, right? Mm -hmm. The, I didn't pass the test, and but I'm still stinking awesome. You know, yeah. <laughs> um, so that takes vulnerability that takes, you know, um, sharing the truth of, you know, that's at heart of your business. So thank you for sharing it courageously. And um, I know a lot of people related to it for sure. Even thank me in these conversations. So thank you for yeah. having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, and OK, so I hope that you can join the next conversation. But our next authentic conversation with an entrepreneur is December 15th before the holidays. Um, and it'll be the same time, 1.30 Eastern time. We're talking to Jennifer Felt, and the topic is honoring your needs. Mm. So we're actually gonna dive into mental health and business, which isn't a topic that's often talked about, but certainly is very present for many business owners and individuals. So yes. we're gonna round out the year with that hot topic. So I hope you all will join. And Jennifer is just amazing. She is such a gem. So I hope you all will join. Um, I wouldn't have anyone else on the show if they weren't that way, right? <laughs> so thanks so much, Pam. And thanks, everyone, for joining. Thank you. Bye.